your throttles? Coming around. Ugh. Come with me if you want to live. I'll be back. And all the other Arnold quotes from the Terminator are going to apply to the Su-37, the Terminator. The Su-37 Terminator was essentially a demonstration aircraft built by Sukhoi and the Soviets to prove that thrust vectoring was the boss. To prove that thrust vectoring was the big cojona. And in this video, we're going to talk exactly what happened with the Su-37, why you should care about it, and how the tactics created by the Su-37 have been used in the Su-57 and other Russian aircraft that are now going head-to-head -head with the F-16. At the end of the day, this is going to be a video that dives into how thrust vectoring works, why it's good, why it's bad, and stay to the very end of the video to hear about Maverick's Cobra, the Super Cobra, which you might not have heard about, and some other maneuvers from fifth generation aircraft that essentially stemmed from the one, the only, the Su-37 Terminator. Now it's worth me saying at the beginning of this that as a Western fighter pilot, obviously I'm going to think that I can beat the Su-37 in pretty much any situation. But at the end of the day, I'm going to break this down from a perspective of looking at the Su-37 like it's a sports car, like it's a Bugatti, like it's a car that I want to drive and fly because I would at the end of the day test this thing out. And who knows, maybe some Western pilots have actually gotten their hands on the workings of how this thing was developed, how it's been able to apply the technology technology from the Terminator into other Russian aircraft. So let's talk about what this Terminator was. At the end of the day, it was a single seat twin engine aircraft that was built for air superiority. It was designed by the Sukhoi Design Bureau and it essentially served as a technology demonstrator for thrust vectoring technology. A technology demonstrator or a tech demo, also known as a demonstrator model, is a prototype and it's a rough example or otherwise an incomplete version of something that could be created in the future. It's built to prove concepts. It can be used to demonstrate technology to specifically investors, to partners, to partner nations, other nations that might be putting up money to create whatever aircraft is being demonstrated. So they're essentially showing off and they're like, hey, check out my Terminator, bro. You want one of these shiny Terminators, don't you? Of course you do. Give me a billion dollars. Let's talk about why this thing exists. It actually made its maiden voyage in 1996. And throughout its entire lifespan, it basically demonstrated super maneuverability, which is also known as post-stall maneuvering. And that is a characteristic that is very specific to 4.5 generation or fifth generation aircraft. So with the Su-37, they essentially strapped on the thrust vectoring capability that would be used in fifth generation or 4.2 onward generation aircraft that they basically bolted on to a Su-27. And it performed this super maneuverability at air shows showing off to the world that, hey, the Soviets, yeah, we have thrust vectoring technology. We're better than Arnold Schwarzenegger. We can take down the Terminator. We actually have something better than the Terminator. And this thing can thrust vector itself around into a somersault, but we'll get to that in a second. So it basically existed to show that the Soviets had thrust vectoring technology. Now, at the time, the Cold War was winding down and the Soviets wanted to show that they had the ability to put forth an aircraft that could compete with the F-16 and the F-15 and actually one-up it. It was a you know what measuring contest and at the end of the day the Soviets looked at it like if they can show that their jets are more maneuverable they're basically beating Western fighters or beating the F-16 and the F-15 which had fixed engines for a good reason at the time the engines on the F-15 and F-16 were fixed because they were focused on other things they're focused on ease of maintenance because at the end of the day maintenance on a thrust vectoring aircraft is horrendous, especially some of these earlier models like the Terminator. You're gonna be spending hours of time just to maintain these things. At the end of the day, it takes about 20 maintenance hours for one hour of flight time in an F-16. Now, when I look at the Su-27s, when I look at the early models of the Su-37s that are executing the thrust vectoring technology, I would assume it would be probably double that. So you're looking at probably 40 hours of maintenance time for each hour. 
hour of flight time just to make sure that these early versions of thrust vectoring are working properly. That's how complicated these things are. Let's talk more about design and development. The Sukhoi Design Bureau actually started research on thrust vectoring as early as 1983. At that time, the Soviet government tasked the Design Bureau with a separate development of the Su-27 Mike which was an upgraded version of the Su-27. At the insistence of one of the generals, Mikhail Simonov, for Mother Russia, who had been the chief designer of the Su-27, Sukhoi and the Siberian Aeronautical Research Institute, they studied asymmetrical vectoring nozzles, and that was the basis of what would go into the Su-37 Terminator. So the Su-37 flew in air shows demonstrating thrust vectoring technology, and a tip of the hat to that as well, because again, this is the early version of thrust vectoring, so the pilots that flew it, they got to have some cojones because they know there's a lot of parts back there. Like they have a mini helicopter back there that actually shouldn't be flying. That's what I think of when I think of helicopters. They're not actually flying. They're just beating the air into submission. But these pilots knew that all those mechanical linkages were back there doing what they did at an early stage when this technology wasn't proven. So the fact that this thing flew in air shows for six years, turning and burning, bending this thing around, you gotta tip your hat to the designers, the engineers, and the pilots that were flying it. But inevitably, when it comes to new technology and not knowing the type of maintenance that's actually needed to maintain this thing, and just early models of anything, early models of anything are typically way more maintenance intensive. Tesla, I'm looking at you. So inevitably, the Terminator wasn't meant to last forever. The Terminator was gonna be taken down by the fact that all this different technology hadn't been perfected yet. And what does that mean? Well, it actually means a catastrophic failure of the thrust vectoring system, a catastrophic failure of the horizontal tail, and a crash. The crash occurred during a high G maneuver in 2002 in Russia. The pilot at the time was bending this thing around, performing a max G maneuver with max stick deflection and full thrust vectoring, which ended in a catastrophic failure of the horizontal tail. And this isn't rare. There's all kinds of things that can happen to airshow jets. If a jet is turning and burning for years upon years, the structural forces on that are gonna be so different from a combat jet. And I saw this with the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbird jets are inspected twice as much as other combat jets because they're being bent around flying max g all the time they're rotated in and out of the solo positions the solo positions fly a lot more g's than what the diamond would fly so the structural stress that's put on these things is just intense and this actually culminated with the horizontal tail of an f-16 being ripped off by G-forces in 2016 in Minnesota. There was a high G maneuver being performed by one of the solo jets and the horizontal tail broke in half. That thing fell on a bridge and rumor has it that a van pulled up, put the horizontal tail in the van and took off. So there's a mantle somewhere in the Midwestern United States with half of a Thunderbird tail sitting on it. The downside is some of these materials can be toxic. Some of these can be very bad for humans to touch just based on the honeycomb structure. It is definitely not meant for humans to be touching it. So at the end of the day, who's ever got this thing on their mantle, highly recommend you get a hazmat suit on next time you're sitting down watching my YouTube videos. So at the end of the day, the Su-37 did not enter production. It was solely used as that technology demonstrator. There was a report released in 1998 that said a second Su-37 had been built from a Su-27 Mike, but it turns out that was just a rumor and not actually true. Instead, what Sukhoi did is they just applied the lessons learned from the Su-37 Terminator into other areas aircraft like the Su-27 later variants, the Su-30 MKI, and other variants of the Su's that would be used by Russia and other partner nations. But why did they even design this thing in the first place? Well, Soviet engineers and pilots learned that once an aircraft stalled, the pilots couldn't really recover from that stall well and get back into a dogfight. So that's why thrust vectoring actually became a thing. Among the maneuvers that were perfected by the Terminator was Pugachev's Cobra maneuver. Now this is the maneuver that you see in Top Gun Maverick. It's too low. Too late. Had your chance. That's a kill. Talking. When Maverick slams on the brakes, pulls up, basically points his tail at the enemy aircraft behind him and lets that enemy aircraft fly in front of him and then he just starts to wail on that enemy aircraft like it's a baby seal. 
And what is built upon it is the Super Cobra Maneuver. The Super Cobra Maneuver is the coal bit, which actually means somersault, where the aircraft pulls up and does a full 360 and then points again at the enemy aircraft. I like this way better than the actual Cobra because doing the 360 in the Super Cobra can potentially help you keep sight of that enemy aircraft much more effectively than having that aircraft pass underneath your belly like Maverick does in the Top Gun series. Keep Keep sight, win the day. Lose sight, lose the fight. That's the adage that all fighter pilots are going to use, and at the end of the day, the Super Cobra helps aviators do that much more effectively. And all this thrust vectoring, really it comes down to killing the bandit prior to even being in visual range. So for the West, we focused on killing the bandit prior to the merge. And then once we got to the merge, we focused on fundamentals that relied less on thrust vectoring and more on just good two circle and one circle fights, which is just a fancy way of saying managing your energy and realizing that if you just rely on thrust vectoring to turn and shoot and you miss that shot, now you're just floating you don't have a ton of energy to get your aircraft back up to speed so a western pilot flying a jet more of an energy conscious awareness in that pilot is potentially going to beat a four and a half generation thrust vectoring aircraft any day of the week even if it's called the terminator and one maneuver that i'll tell you about though when it comes to western fifth generation fighters is the j turn or the hook turn flown by the f-22 this is just one of the bread and butter moves of a thrust vectoring aircraft where it's essentially just an extremely tight turn where you're pointed one direction and you just turn and point the other direction. I know it sounds simple, but the J-turn to me is one of the most fundamental thrust vectoring maneuvers and most likely more effective than the Cobra or the Super Cobra because you have a much better chance of keeping sight throughout that J-turn and the F-22 executes that extremely well. So thanks for much for watching everybody. While the Terminator is an epic name, I'll just say that let's put Arnold inside an F-22 and put him up against any Terminator and at the end of the day, he's gonna slay any other Terminator I'm sure you can probably visualize that. So what I say is Sukhoi, throw up a Terminator with your best pilot. We'll throw Arnold at an F-22. We'll make this happen. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.